Hello everybody, I am Jared Ross, a Genie Vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I will be reacting to She Isn't African Enough, DNA Ancestry Test featuring It's Okay to Be Smart by Say It Loud. Now, I'm not familiar with the Say It Loud channel. I am familiar with It's Okay to Be Smart, which is part of PBS. And then when I looked it up, I saw Say It Loud is also part of PBS, their digital studios. So for this video, I'm guessing they're going to do a real deep dive into the DNA stuff. So I'm, I'm really hopeful that they're going to, you know, talk a lot about the science, be very realistic about it. That's all I'm going to say for now. But before we do jump into the video, please be sure to give this a like. It really does help me out. Also, be sure to subscribe and click that bell for notifications on future videos. But with all that fun stuff said, let's go ahead and jump into the video. DNA testing for genetic ancestry is one of the fastest growing consumer markets. The industry more than doubled in 2017, and it's now estimated that well- Okay, so this video is from 2019, so about two years old. I wonder if they'll, they'll end up talking about forensic genetic genealogy because I think that was right around when that was kind of all big in the news because of the Golden State Killer case being solved. Well over 26 million people have access to their DNA profiles. Most people who have tested are in the U.S. And most of those people are white, black, and mixed race Americans whose ancestors go back at least three generations here. That's right. People of this great melting pot of a country want to know what melted, how much melted, and where the stuff that melted came from. We're going to look at the positives and negatives of these tests for black Americans. Black folks have deep roots in the U.S., obviously. The importation of slaves was banned in 1808, so most of us have been here for well over 200 years. But we're the least likely to know our ancestral past because of slavery. When you send your DNA off to one of those personal genomics or ancestry companies, they don't read all six billion letters of your DNA. They only have to read a few hundred or thousand spots. Unless you do... Uh... Uh, whole genome sequence tests such as like nebula which i did one and you can go watch my video where i react to those results um so but most of the consumer tests they do not read all of your genome they're reading like 600 700 thousand markers what they get is a kind of barcode that describes your unique combination of dna letters at these spots because who wouldn't want their entire identity summarized by a barcode then they compare your unique barcode with thousands of reference individuals from different geographical areas to see what you share and what you don't. They sprinkle a little math on it, and then they send you their best guess of where your DNA comes from. The genetic databases that these companies use to play the DNA matching game have major gaps, major non-white gaps. Nearly 80% of people who have participated in studies about genes are of European descent. Right. Gotcha. That means that analyzing the data of Africans, Middle Easterners, Asians, and indigenous Americans is pretty difficult, and especially difficult if you're a mixture, because many DNA segments are shared among groups. So why don't they just go to those places and get more of the DNA? They actually, I mean, there are a lot of studies that are constantly trying to seek out groups that aren't tested. Um, some of these studies are financed, I believe, by some of the big companies, but um, I know that there are a lot of, you know, there's a lot of difficulties in doing it. And um, ju just some of the genetic studies that I've helped participate in, such as the Jewish Genetic Census, one of the things they have been trying to do is to seek out people from very, very small communities that are very isolated. A lot of people don't even really know about them to do, you know, get their DNA and really learn further about it. Um, although, granted, a lot of the studies I'm working with also focus mostly on Y chromosome DNA. They do work with autosomal DNA, which these tests work with autosomal DNA. So the DNA from your autosomes, as opposed to the Y chromosome DNA, which is only in males and is passed down from father to son almost unchanged. In February of 2017, a consortium of African scientists called the H3 Africa Initiative released ethical guidelines for foreign researchers. So good. Now scientists have to evaluate how their work directly benefits the African community they're studying. Yes, and that includes economic benefits, which gets into another issue with these tests, how the companies make money off of your genetic data. I mean, well, you pay for the service. Yeah. 
but then forever and into eternity, they can sell your genetic data to third parties like research firms and drug companies. Most of them let you opt out, but some don't. You've taken the test? Yeah, done like five. What? First of all, too many. But easy, we're doing a whole episode. Uh, if you're trying to find your family, definitely not too many. That's it. <laughs> I kind of get where they're coming from, but that that little statement, that's not too many. If you're trying to find your family, if you're an adoptee, you're trying to find your family, testing at different companies is probably a good idea because they have different matching databases and then you have a higher amount of matches to match against, which means there's a higher likelihood you will find relatives. So yeah, if you're just caring about your admixtures, I mean, it probably doesn't matter to, you know, test only one, but if you're trying to find your family or you're trying to expand your family tree or any of that, yet yeah, testing at multiple places is the way to go. From a genealogical standpoint, I disagree with what she just said there. All right, but let's see what they, what else they have to say. So about DNA testing, and you didn't think to tell us you've had like five? I forgot. Oh my God. Okay, well, let's take a look at my results. So as you can see, each company has gotten different results based on what is in their database and how their algorithm analyzes my DNA barcode. Okay, but like some of these are way different. Like that one has only like three- But we're not even looking at percentages. We're looking at the maps and the coloring on the maps, which are, uh, this is like the worst way to present it. They should be showing percentages not the maps the maps are okay if uh, if the percentages are like a pixelated version of your your family ancestry you know in the sense that you get an idea but it's too pixelated to tell for sure well looking at the maps would be like looking at a pixelated version of that pixelated <laughs> family tree so it's like you're 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 looking at the least amount of data in this so i kind of not liking how they're doing that three places on it oh Hey, Kenya. But that one has basically everywhere on it. Also Kenya. And also coloring things very in a very different manner. They're not using any sorts of circles and different, they're defining it differently. They need to focus more on the percentages if they're gonna be showing stuff like this and trying to compare it. <laughs> yeah, the discrepancies between these maps is nuts. But when you think about it, a lot of ethnicities share a large portion of DNA because of shared history and you know, people getting it That's on and true. stuff. Yeah. So if a company doesn't <laughs> have enough non-white DNA, they won't be able to distinguish well between non-white ethnicities when they i kind of hate how they're using non i was really hopeful with the title saying she isn't african enough that they would really kind of avoid using the whole white and black terminology because that really is more of a social construct with it all because white covers a lot and black covers a lot and so saying you know non-white ancestry well it depends. I mean, you know, like before they said that we're the least likely to know our ancestral past because of slavery. But a lot of Ashkenazi Jews are lucky to trace back to the 1860s. And then there's a lot of other population groups where they have a lot of difficulty tracing out their ancestry. And then here to just say white, well, you know, there there's white people all over the place with all sorts of different ancestral backgrounds. And then when you consider the fact also that there's a lot of communities that would be in Western Asia and in the Middle East and you know all these different areas that would also be considered white based on their skin tone and they aren't as well represented. And this is an issue that's really based on the companies, what they do have available. It's one of the reasons why in a lot of the videos that I've watched for people of Asian ancestry, when they test at companies based in Asia, they get a better breakdown. But at the same time, in one of those videos, uh, I think one of the guys was half Asian, half European. And when it went to his European side, it was like so not nuanced at all. I think it was very, very basic. All right, let's see what else they have to say. They analyze the DNA. They put it through the algorithm many dozens of times and then average the results. So the 17% that I share with them is an average. Look, I might share 0% or as much as 33%. 
Okay, so those are countries now, but there are a lot of ethnicities there, like the Ashanti, the Akan, Songhai, Hausa. Ancestry.com explains that national lines are pretty arbitrary. This region has about 60 different ethnic groups that share DNA. That doesn't exactly inspire confidence. I know, but the- Right. Basically, the issue is, is that everyone thinks of the world in modern terminology based on those borders when these tests are looking at the past 200 and 300 years. And when you try to look at what the borders were like 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, they are not the same at all. And then not even considering on top of that, that a lot of these population groups have shared history beyond that. And that causes further issues with trying to decipher what is coming from what area. So it's I feel like they're explaining it well. But at the same time, they're kind of not. Let's continue. Opposite is the case for Benin, Togo, because my range for that was not wide at all, 28 to 30 percent. There's a little bit of DNA inside a part of the cell called the mitochondria. Now, way back in deep time, these mitochondria used to be free swimming creatures, but they got swallowed by a bigger cell, and now they live inside all of our cells. These things have their own genetic material, and unlike your other 46 chromosomes, there's no shuffling when it's passed between generations. And what's more, all of your mitochondria came from your mother's egg, not your father's sperm. Yep. So we can look at that DNA to trace an unbroken line of ancestors stretching back through every female in your family tree. Now, tiny changes in this DNA also let us track how human populations have migrated, for most people at least. The most ancient mitochondrial DNA in humans comes from Africa, where our species originated. And we can even trace it back to one woman, about 150,000 years ago. Scientists call her Mitochondrial Eve. Yeah. She wasn't the only Homo sapiens female alive then. Now, I need to say one of the things that's been one of the most annoying things I see in comments is people misinterpreting the idea of mitochondrial Eve into this thing called the Eve gene as if it's like some singular gene that only African women have. I hate to break it to you, but that's wrong. The Eve gene is a bad way to refer to it for one, because it's not like it's a single gene. And mitochondrial Eve is more of a concept. So he says we can trace it back to one person. It's not like we know who this woman was, and it's not like she was the only woman who was alive back then. But based on all of the mitochondrial haplogroups of all of the people in the world and the mutations, and they can basically tell from the mutations how far back Back, certain people are connected then using that they can then determine that the furthest point back where all the people are connected so the whole mitochondrial family tree which is also known as the phylogenetic tree traces all the way back up to this one woman who all the mitochondrial dna haplogroups descend from and unfortunately this concept has been misattributed to be this Eve gene thing, but I'm really not going to dive too much into this Eve gene thing. I'm actually working with a well-known geneticist uh, to try to come up with a video to kind of dive into this because it seems to be a very widely held uh, misattribution of mitochondrial Eve. Um, and it's being used to kind of mean a whole lot of things that it doesn't mean. Let's continue. <laughs> but only her lineage lives on today. So... I guess that means we're all basically related, right? So my ancestry starts here, just like everyone else's, East Africa. Then we're itching to migrate. Bye, Mom. We got to see the world. First, my people went north to Egypt. Someone should build some pyramids here, right? They were not into building pyramids, I guess. So they went to Turkey. Ooh, I love these Caucasus Mountains, fam. I'm a clown to the tippy top. Hey, guys, you see them weird-looking people over there with the hairy faces? OMG, what? We gotta check them out. So they crossed the mountains into... Europe? Yep. My maternal ancestors were the first Homo sapiens to go to Europe after the Ice Age, where they met... Neanderthals! Neanderthals! <laughs> Which explains my Neanderthal DNA. Weird. But wait, I'm not finished. Apparently we were too hot. Let's go up there and be British. Anybody got a boat? Okay, so your maternal ancestors are British? No. So they migrated north again and... There isn't much north left. Ended up in Finland where they followed the reindeer and knit sweaters and sang songs around the fire and ice. 
You're Finnish? Yep. All done. Okay, so your mitochondrial DNA isn't very African. Genetics don't have much to do with identity. Like, I know my ethnic ancestry for the most part. I'm from Kenya. My people are a Kikuyu. But culturally, I'm Black American. True. So would you ever take a DNA test of? I mean, actually, yeah. Because even though I know my ethnic ancestry, I don't actually know my ancestors, the people. After my grandparents, it's kind of a blank for me. And okay, I'm starting to like where this is going. It's it, The ancestry is the best part, learning the actual story. And then you use the DNA in conjunction with that research, the paper trail, to then get the full story. If you took the test, you could find your cousins. Like my favorite internet cousin might be my real cousin. Yeah, sure, but I was thinking more like my family tree. DNA testing can help you with your genealogical research. So, what about you? Would you take an ancestry test? Why or why I not? Have. And if you have, did you find anything surprising? And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Okay, um, I, I think, I mean, that was a pretty good video. I, I have a few um, criticisms of how they presented a few things. I kind of get it because what they're trying to do is they're trying to give it in a very simplified format to make it easy to understand and to make it interesting. But of course, with that ending, talking about how it does help with building your family tree and genealogical research, well, that's my thing. That's what I love these tests for. That's what I, you know, that's why I love reviewing these DNA results because then I can kind of get an idea of if I were researching this person's family tree, what would I expect to find? Where would I possibly end up? What might I be able to tell from the DNA test to help me with it because a lot of people really they don't they don't understand the test i did also like how they did talk about you know there's there's a difficulty when you're looking at a certain area well the the borders of today don't quite fit up with the actual genetics and population groups of those areas so you know you may be looking at an area where it covers you know multiple population groups but those groups all are technically one larger population group because they have all of this shared ancestry. But then on top of that, they might be connected to other population groups that aren't connected to the other population groups are connected to. And so it becomes this weird thing. It's sort of like, you know, you have your mom's side and your dad's side. So a great example would be someone with Mexican ancestry. They're going to have a representation of European and they're likely going to have a representation of Native American. It's going to vary on how much that is. But then when you look at it, it's not like you're always going to find a connection between someone with Native American ancestry and someone with European ancestry. But when you look at the Mexican population group, you're going to get that mixture. I think the biggest disappointment I had was when they were talking about the actual results and they didn't even show the percentages. They just showed the maps. And I think that is the worst way to do it in a to compare it and especially when you're looking at maps where it just highlights a country in modern terms as you know you're related to this country as opposed to the maps like ancestry where they're giving a regional like sort of circling a area like oh well it could fit in here and then they have like little you know dotted line areas in another spot and so it, it's it's just it's like the worst way to show that and i i I wonder why they decided to do that. Um, part of me feels like maybe if you look at the percentages, it makes a lot more sense than if you just look at the maps. You know, they say right after that section, you know, but there there are issues in, you know, determining this stuff. And then they talk about the ranges. So it's like they hit stuff really well. And then other stuff, it's like they didn't. So well, thank you so much for checking out this video. I do hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to give this a like. It really does help me out. If you'd like to subscribe, just click right about here. It's completely free to do so. And if you'd like to watch another great video, check out this one right here.